Welcome again. So today's lesson is on industrial chemistry and in particular we'll be looking at sulfuric acid. And today's lesson we'll be looking at sulfuric acid safety and how to handle it in a safe way because it's a very dangerous chemical so we really need to be a little bit aware of the safety issues associated with the use of this acid. Okay. First and foremost obviously sulfuric acid is dangerous in exclamation marks and everything because of various factors. So it's obviously a very dangerous chemical and it's very corrosive, which is the first thing. So like many other acids and bases, it's extremely corrosive. And it can cause severe burns if it comes into contact with the skin. Okay? So a number of safety precautions are necessary when handling this acid. So remembering that it absorbs water. And when it absorbs water, it dilutes. And when it dilutes, it releases a lot of heat. So not only does it cause chemical burns, it can cause actual physical or heat burns as well. So you've got to be aware of all these different things as well. So first thing, protective clothing. Safety goggles should always be worn when using sulfuric acid in an experiment. Okay, so safety goggles have to be worn. That's, there's, no two, there's, nothing, there's no exception to this rule. You have to wear safety goggles when dealing with sulfuric acid. Gloves and lab coats are also really important. Okay, again, this is not really a, this is not a sort of a possibility or you know, there's no way around this, you need to be wearing these things when you deal with sulfuric acid. Because if you get it on your skin, like I said, it can cause a lot of damage. So you just want to be aware of these things. This protective clothing stops sulfuric acid from reaching your skin if it's spilled, obviously. That's the whole point of protective clothing. Uh, okay, so next thing, now that we've protected ourselves, we need to go to, well, if it does spill, because you know, humans are humans, mistakes happen, we need an accident response protocol. So if acid is spilt on the floor or on the bench, sodium hydrogen carbonate or some kind of similar substance can be sprinkled on top to neutralize it. Okay, so you could use sodium hydrogen carbonate or baking soda or sodium bicarb, or you can use sodium carbonate. Um, that's another good chemical to use. Just not something silly like, you know, sodium hydroxide where you'll have a huge huge release of heat um, from the acid and the base mixing together. So I would suggest sodium hydrogen carbonate or just straight sodium carbonate, one of the two would be fine. A supply of running water can be used to wash off acid on, that's been spilled on your skin. So when you spill acid on your skin, you have to be aware to wash it straight off. Um, otherwise, it will burn you, obviously, <laughs> but it will also release a lot of heat from drawing water out of your skin. So if you have a big supply of running water, not only does it wash away the acid, it can move the heat away as well. Sort of similar to how a burn works. When you burn yourself on like a Bunsen burner or something, you put it immediately under cold water to make sure you get all of that heat out of your system. Okay, so we've talked about what happens, how we protect ourselves, what we do if we do spill it, and now we need to talk about what happens, how do we store it, okay? So sulfuric acid can be stored in glass bottles um, and definitely no larger than one liter, okay? So you don't want to have a huge container of sulfuric acid just sitting around because that's a recipe for disaster. So glass bottles are very safe. Glass is a very inert substance um, and it's pretty strong as well. And so no bigger than a liter because otherwise you'll have, you're just asking for trouble. So the bottle should be stored in a drip tray to prevent acid from coming into contact with the shelf or bench. So what a drip tray is, is essentially you've got a bottle here. That's your bottle. And a drip tray would just be another tray just to catch the acid if it does happen to spill or someone knocks it over or something. So it should be big enough also to contain all of that liquid safely. Okay. So, you know, if this is say half a litre and this bottle is one litre, um, and you spill it all, you don't want it to spill over. So you want to make sure that the tray is at least as big as the, as much volume as the bottle, okay? Preferably bigger if you can, if you can manage the space. So any acid dripping down the side of the bottle should be wiped off with a wet tissue. So just quickly get rid of it. Don't want to, don't want any more issues with it. Okay. So now we've stored it, we've protected ourselves, we know how to deal with accidents. 
So what are the potential issues when we actually use it? Well, sulfur di uh, sulfur sulfuric acid can actually decompose into, more, into other dangerous chemicals, like sulfur dioxide. So you don't want to breathe sulfur dioxide in because it can form sulfurous acid in your lungs, and that's bad. It can form sulfur trioxide, which would just form sulfur, sulfuric acid in your lungs, which is again bad. And it can also produce hydrogen sulfide. Okay? So hydrogen sulfide is again not a very nice substance to use, but uh, it's that rotten egg smell. So that's not dangerous, but it's not very pleasant either. For this reason, it should be kept in a well-ventilated area away from other chemicals. So always put it in a fume cupboard or somewhere where you've got a lot of ventilation available and make sure it's pretty far away from other chemicals. Okay, so that's one potential issue, the decomposition. Another one that we've brought up in the previous lesson is dilution of sulfuric acid. So um, some colleagues of mine were looking through for pictures on the internet of someone actually putting water in, in sulfuric acid. So putting the water into a beaker full of concentrated sulfuric acid. And the internet actually doesn't have any pictures of that because no one is dumb enough to do that because it's that dangerous. So you'd think that someone would have tried it by now and taken a photo of it, but apparently not. So when sulfuric acid dissolves in water, it produces a large amount of heat. And that's, we've mentioned that in the last lesson. And that heat causes the solution to boil, which can splash acid. So it can also cause the acid to form a vapor and small droplets of acid that could be inhaled. So we don't want to breathe in this acid, so we have to be careful of how we dilute it, because otherwise we could get fumes of sulfuric acid, and you definitely do not want to be breathing those in. So what do we do to make sure this is all safe? Well, we only add small amounts of acid to a large volume of water. Okay? So we're talking tiny drops, or small amounts of acid, tiny amounts to big volumes of water. The big volume of water can absorb the heat and won't boil, and the small amount of acid won't cause any sort of splashing or anything. So that's how we keep it safe. The water should be stirred during that process as well, because you don't want it to locally heat. So if we just for instance, in this picture, if the acid was to hit the surface, we want to stir it so that it can move all of that acid around so that it doesn't just sit in one area and boil that one area. So we want it to move around so that the heat can be evenly distributed through that beaker, or that flask in this case. So this spreads the heat evenly through the solution and stops it from boiling. Okay? So it stops it from, um, from boiling in one area. Now, what happens if we dangerously dilute things? Like I said, we couldn't find a picture because no one is actually silly enough to do that. Uh, so adding water to acid, on the other hand, is really, really dangerous. Okay? So we, like I said, no pictures of it. When a small amount of water is added to the acid, the water will heat up and boil. Because of all that ionization, it will boil very rapidly. So this can splash hot acid and water out of the container. Okay? That's not safe. So. Remembering the order, so a little, all these little mnemonics that we keep going through every time. So acid to water, all is well. Water to acid, what an accident. Okay? So it's always A, W, A, W. Okay? So never um, water to acid, because that's bad. So always do the thing you order and <laughs> add the acid to water. Okay? That's a nice one as well. Okay? So just be aware. Um, don't want anyone to get hurt using sulfuric acid in the future. More, if you think your life's too placid, add the water to the acid, okay? So again, that one's not as, I don't like this one as much, because it kind of, it's telling you to do something wrong uh, if you don't know what the word placid means. So the first two are good, okay? So we've dealt with safety of sulfuric acid, what we do, how we protect ourselves. What happens when we spill it? How do we store it? Uh, what are the safety issues surrounding sulfuric acid, like dilution and decomposition? And then the last part is sort of how do we get it around to places? How do we move it? Because it's this dangerous chemical, how do we get it from lab A to lab B? So highly concentrated sulfuric acid does not contain enough water to ionize. So as I mentioned, when you have huge amount, like 98% concentration, it doesn't even have enough water to break up into H plus and sulfate. 
So therefore it will not attack iron or steel. So if you can get it to very high concentrations, it won't even attack metal. On the proviso that it's never exposed to water. Okay? This means that it can be transported in strong steel containers, which is really good. I mean, we can make really strong steel containers really easily, really cheaply. That's why we want to concentrate sulfuric acid despite the safety risks, simply because it's really good to transport. So dilute sulfuric acid obviously vigorously attacks metals like steel, so we don't want it to dilute at all. So this means that dilute acids have to be transported in really inert containers, like fragile glass or plastic containers. Okay? So for this reason, sulfuric acid is usually transported in its concentrated form. And even beyond that concentrated form, we have another form called oleum. And oleum is an even safer variant um, of sulfuric acid to store. And I'm sure I covered that in a previous lesson. So this wraps up today's lesson on the safety of sulfuric acid and how to deal with it. So we looked at how to protect yourself, how to deal with spills, how to store the acid, and what are all the safety concerns when we use the acid, as well as transporting that acid from place A to place B. Okay. So we'll go into the question segment now, and hopefully you'll see all the different parts of this safety process that we've talked about today. So which substance should be poured on spilled acid? Now this question is the one thing that I want Every student who listens to this take out of this. Like This is the only message. If you learn anything this lesson, this is it. You always uh, add something like sodium carbonate or something, a weak base to the acid to neutralize it. Okay, So sodium hydrogen carbonate is the answer. So powdered sodium metal would obviously be bad because you're just going to get a huge reaction and then pro probably an explosion as well. Uh, we don't want to add water because it would just heat up the spill. It could boil. You could get acid everywhere. That's bad as well. Sodium hydroxide. Um, so it sounds like a good idea. We've got this really strong acid. Let's put this really strong base on there. No, <laughs> because the really strong acid and the really strong base will react and will release a lot of heat, and that could cause more issues than prevent. So we want to do B. So it's amphiprotic, so it can neutralize acids and bases. The neutral heat of neutralization is quite small, and it can even form carbon dioxide, which can take away some of that heat as just plain carbon dioxide that's hot. So that's the one that we want to do. So this is actually the point that we want to make really, really clear to you guys. When diluting a very concentrated acid, which one is correct? Just This is the major point of today always add the acid to the water. So small amounts of acid to very large volumes of water. Okay, so which one of these actually says that? Well, it's A. So acid should always be added to the water so that the water can absorb the heat released. Okay, so large volume of water, a little bit of acid, can absorb all the heat, and then you just slowly work your way through it that way. Okay, so despite all your precautions, because we know that sometimes can't prevent every contingency from happening. You spill a small amount of sulfuric acid on your wrist, okay, in your lab. What should you do? Okay, so you spilt it on your wrist. I'll oh, know you've. Don't panic. What should you do? Well, wash your wrist with cold water. Cold being an important term here. So for ten minutes, okay. So you just run cold water over your wrist. That will take away the acid. So. Because when the sulfuric acid reacts with your skin, it can produce a lot, of, a lot of heat, which can cause burns in addition to acid corrosion. So the running water will actually carry away the acid, but because it's cold, it will also absorb the heat. Um, so you'll sort of protect yourself both ways um, by using the running water. So just run your wrist under cold water for 10 minutes, and that will take away all the acid. It will absorb all the heat, and so you'll hopefully be safe. So. If acids dissolve metal, why can sulfuric acid be contained in metal containers? Well, I mentioned that before. Acids that are ionized or that have dissolved in water will always attack metals. Highly concentrated sulfuric acid does not contain enough water to ionize. So when we have really, really concentrated sulfuric acid, it doesn't ionize, so it won't attack the metal. 
so it won't corrode the metal containers, of course, until it's exposed to water. So that's why we can safely move it around in metal containers, because there's no H plus to attack the metal. Okay, last question. One mole of water can dissolve one mole of sulfuric acid, and this process releases 90 kilojoules. Okay. 0.5 moles of pure sulfuric acid, which is 49 grams, are poured into 300 grams of water initially at 25 degrees Celsius. If the water absorbs all of the heat, will it boil? And if not, find its final temperature. Okay, so there's heaps and heaps of stuff going on in this question. And it's actually a very nice question. So let's see if we can work this out. So first thing is how much, how many moles of sulfuric acid do we have? 0.5. And it only takes one mole of water to dissolve one mole of sulfuric acid. Okay, so the process of half a mole dissolving releases 45 kilo, kilo, kilojoules, okay? So we've got half a mole releases 45 kilojoules. And the heat capacity of water is 4.18 joules per kilogram Kelvin, okay? So the difference in temperature is simply delta T on MC because we've got uh, oh, delta H equals MC delta T. Okay, so we're just rearranging that equation. And that's our that's where we get that equation from. So 45 times 10 to the, minus, 10 to the 3 over 300 times 4.18. And so we get 35.9 Kelvin. So that's the difference in temperature that we see. So T is simply just, remember that delta T is T final minus T initial. So we just have to add 35.9 and 60.9 degrees. Okay. So it doesn't get to boiling yet, which is good. We've done that quite safely. Now, 54 grams of water initially at 25 degrees C are poured into 300 grams of sulfuric acid. If the water absorbs all the heat, will it boil? If not, find its final temperature. So now it's the opposite question. So we've done this not safely this time, so don't follow this person's method, but let's just do the calculation for argument's sake. So the process of all three moles dissolving releases 270 kilojoules, and the heat capacity of water is 4.18. So there, the same process, delta T equals H, delta H on MC. 270 times 10 to the 3 over 54 grams times 4.18. So it's 1,196 Kelvin. So the water will boil long before it finishes dissolving the acid. So we would have boiled that water far before we even got to dissolving all of the water in the first place. Okay, so that's very dangerous. So that wraps up today's lesson, and we've talked about the safety issues on sulfuric acid, and so hopefully you now know how to deal with sulfuric acid um, in the lab. So I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson.